Hello friends and welcome to a very special new broadcast for Thursday. I am Ross from Gamertag Media and this is going to be the start of a regular Thursday broadcast which is a little bit different. It's not going to be games related directly. It's going to be concept art book directly. So what that means is every Thursday from 9 p.m. live on Twitch and of course if you're watching later on demand on YouTube then a huge thanks for supporting um, the channel of course. That should go without saying, but I want to say it anyway. This is going to be a regular book club sort of project. So every week I'm going to take um, one of the books from my vast collection, my vast addiction collection of concept art books from the video game industry, which I absolutely adore. I have way too many. And I'm just going to talk about it. I'm just going to show off the books. We're just going to flick through the pages. We're going to just really take our time and pour over the pages of a game of any particular um, of our choosing. And hopefully just have a lot of fun talking about that and showing off the incredible artwork that some of the best artists in the industry have put together in a collection. So because this is episode one of the Concept Art Book Club, what I thought would be really awesome to dive into is Horizon Zero Dawn, the first game, and quite timely because Horizon Forbidden West was just shown off at Sony's State of Play. Therefore, that's right, we're going to jump over to camera two and we're going to be taking a really good look at the art of Horizon Zero Dawn. The cover art is just beautiful. We can see Aloy, we have the tall, the tall neck, um, which is this beautiful uh, masking effect of Aloy's silhouette, the tall neck within her profile. And we've also got some watchers there. And of course the, the customary triangle futuristic pattern and um, that, that wallpaper effect. So, this is a hardback book. As you can see, we have uh, almost like an ink blot. It's almost got a little bit of embossing effect to it as well. And of course, Aloy's trusty bow and arrow as well on the cover. It's really, really elegant, subtle design, and I really like it. And you've got the spine of uh, the book as well. Horizon Zero Dawn by Titan Books. So what you're gonna notice a lot in this uh, this book is these double page spread full wallpapers which are really just a perfect format to to show off just how lovely and how detailed a lot of the concept art is there we go we have a big a big opening hero shot that really sets the tone of course i'm um, the art of real horizon zero dawn by paul davies and let's just zoom in that is that is a hero's pose if ever i saw one just pan around it so we get a really good look of the uh the post post apocalyptic world in which the the series takes place it is this kind of san francisco setting this west coast california like um like setting so this is the contents we have the foreword then um, a section on the nora which is of course the tribe in which aloy um it was ostracized form her it was supposed to be born into but she was ostracized as a as a baby and um, then we have the karja the osaram a section on bandits the banuk the eclipse um, a whole section on the machines and that is that's where the real fun begins is when we start to take a look at the machines and then we have a section on uh, the ruins of the world and of course the final section which is on the acknowledgements we're going to be doing a little bit of a like a critique i guess as to what the book has to offer in terms of its completeness, in terms of giving the viewer a real understanding of how the world was developed and um, hopefully show off the artwork as much as possible. I think this is uh, this is really, really, really cool to see, like a really fun, really different type of stream. So if we pan around there, there's Aloy in this jungle setting and that was like a machine which has been um, overgrown, ruined, uh, covered in moss. Again, it's just this beautiful, this really beautiful artwork tapestry. So this is Aloy's tribe, essentially Aloy's tribe, or they were supposed to be Aloy's tribe, but it turned out that um, 
she for some reason was completely ostracized, banished, marked as an outsider, which you don't know why she was marked as an outsider, but it is of course explained the more you play the game. So there's an introductory piece of text there talking about um, the, or the Nora tribe, which you can enjoy reading that. And then if we flick the page, there we go. Look at that. that is one of the original concept arts, sorry, the original character designs for our character of Aloy. And honestly, it's quite a bit different from the character that we are familiar with today. Uh, she still looks incredibly badass, that is for sure. She's got the, uh, the warrior pose down there. But as you can see, this little inset picture is a little better and coming closer to the final design of Aoi. Very much Native American Indian tribal um, culture, which the game heavily borrows from. This is the stuff that I really love. It is the treatments of an early character design, seeing how the different poses work for a particular character design, seeing how clothes and things work for a, a different character design as well. Different weapons, different um, combat poses. So if we just move the camera over here, we can really get, um, it's, it's almost like the, the two sides to Aloy. She's playing with this butterfly, so she's being very gentle and very playful. But then just down here, we have full on warrior pose. So you can really get a, get a feel of her, her physicality in the game. And again, this is just early treatment stuff. Look at this. So you actually get the the layering of the clothes, which is freaking awesome, I've got to say. I, I love to see this. I love to see the exploration of the, the way artists can start to build up the way the armor is supposed to fit the character and the way like the way furs are la layered over the top of leather, for example, and then later on there would need to be armor and the way that, that fits with the fur as well. It's, uh, it's, it's really, really cool to see. And then, then there's a little idol pose of our hero as well. It almost strikes me as like a a form of Disney illustration. That's what I'm, I'm getting from these. And uh, God, it's, it's just awesome. So look at this. This is a study um, treatments of different hairstyles for for Aloy. Again, is going through this very um, functional but but messy type of of way in which Aloy has to you know deal with her very very long hair because there's no salons in the post post apocalyptic world, right? Um, so she's got to she's got to tie it back somehow like badass and but also looks like she's never had a haircut you know what i mean she's got to maintain it but also it looks like really like dreadlocky and and unwashed as well but you can see the different color treatments as well which is really interesting they went for this very fiery redhead and for the final design but you can see the different treatments of dark hair and um, maybe parts of the of the head shaved as well or pleated and put into different styles which is really really interesting it's just fascinating to see and i just i love to pour over this okay and here we go this is more accurate to the final design of aloy there we go that is way more accurate right again i mean that that is a hero pose and a half it's just so badass and then you're really getting a feel for Okay, this is this is her attire, her clothing, her armor. She's got um, metal gauntlets on her wrists there, which is obviously from the machines. So you're already establishing that she is a a hunter in this world, and she's got a, a bow made out of the parts of the robots. Again, colors in her armor and leather, and um, you know, skin hides from some organic animals not just all mechanical animals or creatures i should say that are popular in this world now if we pan over here there you go we can really see the composite bow that um that she has so that one on the left there looks like the final one or near final one but as you can see there are some different treatments it looks like she's got some different feathers or something in there which is pretty dope i have to say 
and now we're getting into some of the, the different clothing that um, Aloy can craft within the world. That's actually one of, I think, the first um, outfits that you can craft, I think. Again, down here. Look at this, let's zoom into the max here. That is showing you like the the top level of of four different outfits there so that one on the far left looks like it is from the banuk um i think and then you have the, the karja ones here which is where she's kind of the karja are like the the sun tribe i think that's correct so therefore um much looser um, she shows a, a little bit more skin there with her midriff because um that tribe is very much sun worshippers so very hot, very light armor. And then we have what looks like a concept art piece of an outfit, which I don't think made it into the game. She's actually got a, a, a boar skin on her shoulder, which would have been really cool if you could actually do that in the game. That would have been pretty, pretty freaking awesome. Oh, hello. So there we go. We have, this is her staff. Now, if there's one complaint that the first game had which looks to be addressed in the second game it is very much the uh, the melee staff is woefully underused there was no upgrade path to that at all and melee combat was a bit pap if we're going to be honest so it looks like horizon forbidden west is going to be completely changing that which i'm really excited for okay our first real look at some of the other characters in the world so that looks like rost and it also looks like the uh the matriarch so this looks like a, a study of um uh one was a concept for rost possibly it looks quite much younger there actually and then the one on the right is the rost that we all know and love from the main game so there is um the matriarch the mother and you can really get a feel for how tribal North American Indian the series leans on. It is very much of the land. You know, the feathers in their their headrests, uh, sorry, their head, um, what's, what's the word? Their head pieces. Its influences are clear, that's that's for sure. But yeah, just, just beautiful character work. So this is the Karja tribe. And if I'm not mistaken is this the tribe which worships the sun i think it is so you'll immediately see an advancement in the culture just by going from the nora which are very very low tech humble almost in their attire it's very much furs it's very much the skins of um, various animals no technology armor metal at all in their their clothing Whereas the Karja are way more almost regal like in their advancement of um, smithing and, and crafting. It looks like they, they have way more um, luxurious and expensive fabrics and materials as well. It looks like silk almost that's on this, um, this knight's sh uh, sash. And then we have different costumes there. Very bird-like actually, which is really interesting. Okay, look at, look at this. Look at the design. Like, the fashion design in this game is freaking beautiful. If we just punch in and pan around this, this he's royalty, right? He is clearly the king of, of the Karja, the sun god, I think is, um, I think is his kind of title. And what is amazing is the geometry, the geo, the geometric design treatments and explorations of the clothing in the Karja. You can really see um, they've used like hard angles for the sun and they've overlaid the sorry they've just they've overlaid two squares and just rotated the top one so it looks like a sun and again you've got those straight lines shooting off it to, to make it look like the the, the rays of sunlight and uh, again it's just a beautiful very brilliant treatment and of of graphic design and fashion design to put together these very ornate and gorgeous outfits for for the advisors to the to the king but of course 
the main event of this book and the game, of course, is the Creature Machines. And right there, that is a Thunderjaw. And that is the daddy. It's, it's not quite Godzilla-like levels of, of huge in the world, but it is the apex predator, the alpha in the world. And you can see way off in the distance there is a tall neck. The tall necks are actually taller than the Thunderjaw, but tall necks are very docile, benign creatures. And then we've got the Watchers there as well, which are like the guards, just the, like the pawns of the world that just patrol around, making sure everything is, is all, on, all okay and policing the world, like sentries, basically, the sentries of the world. So again, this is a part of the game which is immediately jaw-dropping and captivating, and it's, it's these creatures that feel and act and almost emote exactly like wildlife, like deers, like cattle. These guys here, these are much more like a prowling tiger or something like that and uh god they're they're really really good i think they're called scrappers actually you can see the herd right you can see the herd of machines in the background acting like an actual herd of like buffalo or deer or something gazelles uh, and then you have a predator robot right here as well so it has this ecosystem that is genuinely like believable. It's like you instantly buy it because of the behaviors and the sound. The sound effects of these creatures and the, the world is just top drawer as well. The tall necks, of course, the tall necks. These are like um, elaborate radio towers, pretty much, right? They're basically just the radio towers that you scale to then uncover the fog of war on the map. And, and that's kind of their only real purpose, which is a bit of a shame that that's their only purpose because they're, they're just these majestic creatures you cannot take um, a tall neck down although it is depicted here in this artwork that you can probably bring one down you really can't but when you see them move and very elegantly parade around the world you wouldn't want to take them down they're just two beautiful creatures like look at this artwork oh seriously this artwork is just spot on like so nice so nice aha first concepts the very first concepts of the stormbird well the stormbird is one hell of a creature i honestly i would not want to mess with the stormbird at all there you go it shows you the scale as well the stormbird is quite the the boss like creature honestly i love this i love all this stuff look at that i would love more missions where you actually have to fight as a tribe and i and i know narratively that doesn't make any sense in the first game because aloy is completely ostracized and an outcast in tribe but i wonder if there's going to be more tribal stuff uh, tribal activities together within forbidden west that could be really interesting see when you play this game at night time it is just a stunning example of moonlight cutting through the foliage and the trees and then you've got these led light bulb lamps on the face of the watchers which give it crazy personality and if they spot you they turn red so you're getting this great world feedback without having to rely on a hud or a big exclamation point above the creature's head i think you can turn that stuff on if you want but you know if they're suspicious their their flash bulb um lamp in their head will go yellow because they're searching they're curious and if they spot you it'll go red which means they're going to attack you so i love that i love that they've thought about the the game mechanics the feedback of the game into the actual design and uh the makeup of of the creatures it makes it makes so much sense it's, it's freaking awesome so ladies and gentlemen that has been the first episode of the concept art book club which is a new streaming series every Thursday, 9 p.m. Uh, with myself, I pick a new concept art book every single week from my collection and we just look at it. We go through it, we talk about it, we talk about why we love it, we talk about the whole design process, about how a solution was met and you can see the workings of it into the final game and uh, hopefully you're going to join me for future episodes i've had an absolute blast it's just great fun to do this and talk about it i love talking about design so guys until next time take care and i'll see you on the next one Bye bye